Facebook. It's Liz again. How's everyone doing today? We are live again here on Annie's Facebook page. And as you know, I'm live every Friday at 12 Eastern here on Annie's Facebook page. Um, today we have a, something exciting that we're going to do. And if you've been following along, you saw that I posted a poll on the pages and you were to vote on your um, Afghan block. So today we're going to go over the winning Afghan block and I'm going to do a full tutorial um, and how to work that whole pattern. So if you're joining, um, go ahead and say hello. Let me know where you're joining from as usual, just so I know you're here and I can say hello to everyone. So I'll wait a couple seconds for uh, some people to join, but while I'm waiting, I'm going to show you the Afghan block that won. So I worked up a couple just to show you guys. And there's Amy. Hi, Amy. Okay, so this is called the Princess Puff Stitch Afghan Block. And this is the one that I worked up in worsted weight yarn with a five and a half millimeter hook. And as you can see, it's pretty much same on both sides. Just to show you the difference, I worked up another one in a fingering weight yarn. And it's just as pretty, um, but just a little smaller. So you could really just play around with these and make whatever size you like. This is a really pretty Afghan block. And there's Norma. Hello, Norma from North Carolina. Glad you're here. And if you guys are working on anything, let me know what you're working on. Oh, and let me apologize in advance, everybody. Um, as you know, I do this from home um, and the kids are home with, it's just been so crazy with having the kids home and having to do school with them and everything else. And on top of that, we're having our roof um, fit, well, replaced. We're getting a new roof. So if you hear some banging and some nail guns, I apologize in advance. Hopefully it won't be too loud and we'll still be able to go over um, <laughs> the block. Um, but it's going to be mostly um, me uh, showing you today. So hopefully if I have, if I'm talking close to the phone, it won't be too loud. But before I start on the tutorial, I want to show you something else that I did because last week we were talking about the uh, tie garden headband from Knit and Crochet Now. And there is Michelle from Albany, New York. Hello, Michelle. Thanks for joining. This is the tie garden headband that I showed you last week how to do the puff stitch flower for this. And I completed mine, so I just wanted to show everybody how it turned out. And I used, um, we'll see, I, I did my hair, but I'll put it on anyway. And there's Katie from New Jersey. Hi, Katie. Thanks for joining us. So I have short hair, so I kind of wear headbands, just like, like this sort of little boho style like this. Um, but yeah, it turned out really well. And all it was was a linen stitch for this part. And see how it's like nice and stretchy? So if you have more hair than me, it'll fit, it'll still stretch out. And there's, um, Michelle says, hi, Victoria is here from Northern Minnesota and Sharon is here and Alicia is here. And she, Alicia says I'm new to crocheting and I have been teaching myself different stitches, um, for what I'm doing to make a scarf. Good. And I'm glad you're here, Alicia, because, um, I do a tutorial every time we have a live. So you'll learn, you'll probably learn. A good amount today. I was thinking um, about today's tutorial and a lot of times I see, there's Francis, hi friend, <laughs> a lot of times I see people write on Facebook that they have trouble reading patterns and then that's something that they struggle with and this particular Afghan block pattern is a really good sort of um, introduction into pattern reading because it has all of the little things that people sometimes get confused about with the stars and the double stars. So hopefully you were able to print up your pattern ahead of time um, while you're watching, So, you, but I'll show it too. So you can read right through it with me so we can go through it step by step. And let's see, Judy, I wanna say hello to everybody. Jude, Barbara's here, Judy's here, uh, Yvonne is here from Ohio, and Judy's from New Mexico. Hello everybody, I'm so glad everyone is saying hello. Um, just to let me know that people are here and it's good to, to be able to talk to you guys since we're all stuck in the house. Um, so let me start with the tutorial and I can still um, say hello to everybody. So if you have any questions, 
um, you know, of course, ask those and I'll be able to answer them and give me a thumbs up or a heart if you like this tutorial, but I'm going to move my phone. So let me do this gingerly if I can. Here we go. And I want to give you a good view of what I'm doing. So that seems good. And Tutti Fruity from Pakistan. Hello. So glad you're here. And Anita is safe in the house. Yeah, we're safe in the house too. And Karen's from Tennessee. You're welcome, Karen. I love doing this. And hello from Mexico City. And that is Maria. Okay, so like I said, hopefully it won't be too noisy with the roof guys here, but so far so good. Now, if you've printed your pattern, the link was in the description if you were able to print it. Um, if not, just pull it up and you can look through it. So these are just the basics. This is gonna be a little bit of a pattern uh, reading sort of uh, tutorial as well. So I'm gonna start here. And with the beginning says with the H hook, you're gonna chain four and slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring. So I'm using my worsted weight yarn. And as usual, we start with a slip knot. And we're gonna chain four. One, two, three and four and this is so much fun for everybody to be able to follow along at home i'm glad we we did this and um, we're actually going to be doing this every month so if you like this um, we're going to do a few different afghan blocks next week i mean not next week next month so i'll do it at the beginning of the month so we can do do this along together it's a really a fun thing that everybody gets to vote and then work these blocks so there's Dolores from Kentucky, and there's Lucille, and, and, and that's actually Stephanie from Pennsylvania. Hi, Stephanie. And Alicia's going to watch and learn. Good. So like I said, Alicia, I'm going to try to show you the pattern, too, so you can learn how to read the pattern a little bit. So here's my chain four, and then we're going to slip stitch into the first chain, and that's going to form our ring. So we always, usually a granny square or a flower or something like that is going to start with a ring. So there you can see my ring, and then I'm gonna chain up three. And there's BJ from Wisconsin. Hi, BJ. She says, I love your videos. Thank you so much. I'm glad you love them. That makes me feel good. <laughs> so we're gonna chain up three. That counts as the first double crochet. And then the next thing that the pattern says is to 11 double crochet into the ring. So we're gonna do that directly into that ring. And there's Linda from Connecticut, and Glenda says hello. We're gonna do one, two, three. We're doing these double crochets right into that ring. Four, five. There's Aisha from Pakistan and Jill from St. Louis. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. So those were all just double crochets. And I impressed myself that I was able to talk a little bit and count at the same time, because <laughs> that's a challenge. So there I worked those 11 double crochets into that ring. The first uh, chain three that I did counts as a double crochet, so that equals 12 double crochets. And there's Tanya from Chicago. Hello, Tanya, thank you for joining us. So now when it says uh, join in the, um, what does it say? Join in the third chain of the beginning chain three, okay? Here's our beginning chain three. That's the first, let me get my little needle so I can show you. That's the first chain, that's the second chain, and this is the third chain. It can be tricky when you're starting out, but once you've done it a bunch of times, you'll, you'll kind of see where that third chain is. So you're gonna go into that third chain, yarn over, uh, go through there and then through there, and that's your slip stitch. And now we've joined um, all of those, we've joined our ring, so we have a little circle of double crochets. So that was round one. 
and there's five rounds to this little square so it's it's not too bad okay so we did round one now for round two it says beginning puff stitch so you go to where it says special stitches and you see what the beginning puff stitch is and that's a chain three yarn over insert insert hook in place indicated yarn over pull up a loop twice and then yarn over pull through all the loops on hook and let me show you what that looks like this is the beginning puff stitch so we have to chain three to bring our height up and then yarn over insert into that stitch that we're working pull up and sort of pull it up um, so that we have some height there and you're gonna do that twice and there's Tracy from Illinois hi Tracy and Susan says hi Liz and there's my second time I'm so happy everyone is uh, able to join me today okay and then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all of those loops so that's our beginning puff stitch so now it says beginning puff stitch in the same stitch we did that and then you've got I just want to show you this you've got where it says um, in these little brackets so what we're gonna do inside the brackets here's where the bracket ends we're gonna do everything that's in that bracket twice see how it says twice right there so and pay attention to this star too because we're gonna use that after so anytime you see something in brackets then it, that usually means you're going to have to do it a certain number of times. So we're going to do what's inside the, that, those brackets twice. And it's chain one, puff stitch, and next stitch. And that looks like this. Linda says, I just happened on you, and this is beautiful. I can't wait to make these. Oh, Linda, I'm so happy that you are here, and I'm so happy that you like this. And um, as I said, we're going to be doing this every month. So... If everybody enjoys it, that's a good thing. Okay, now, chain one, puff stitch in next stitch twice. So there's my next stitch, and here's my puff. Yarn over, pull up once. Yarn over, pull up twice, and pull it up so you get that height. That's what makes a puff stitch a puff stitch. And then yarn over, pull up three times. So for the beginning puff, we did we did the pull up twice. For the regular puff, we do the three times with the uh, pull up the yarn. And then you yarn over and pull through all of those loops. So it says do the chain one puff stitch in the next stitch twice. So that was once. We're going to do it twice. Chain one, puff stitch in the next stitch two, three. And Concepcion Ayala says, saludos. <laughs> Don't say anything else in Spanish, Concepcion, because I won't know what you're saying, but I got that part. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Okay. Now that's what we did in the brackets twice. Now after that, it says chain five, and the chain five is going to make our corner. One, two, three, four, five. Anytime you start out with a circle, and you make it into a um, square, you have to have a corner, and the corner has to has to make itself around. So you have to have usually more stitches. Michelle says, hello from Nebraska. Hello, Michelle. Okay, so now we did the chain five, and then it says puff stitch in next stitch. So here's our next stitch, and we're gonna do our puff. One, two, and three. Yarn over, pull through all of those loops on the hook. That's your puff stitch. Okay, now I wanna go back to the pattern so I can show you this here. So we did the what was in the brackets twice and then we did the chain five and that was the corner. And then it says puff stitch in next stitch and we just did that. And then it says repeat from star. So here's the star. So we're going to start, go back to where we saw those brackets and do exactly what we just did. So we're going to do all this and, and this and this. And the two stars right here, that just tells us where we're stopping. So you don't really have to pay attention to that until the very end where it says ending last repeat at double star. So this is where we're going to end. 
So now we did this and we're going to go back to the star and do this all again. And we're basically going to do that around the whole square. And Susan says, hi from Boston. Um, <laughs> and Luz, I said, I said not too much Spanish, Luz. <laughs> Muchos saludos from Colombia. Okay, I think I can get that. And Linda says, hello from the Netherlands. Hello, Linda. Okay, where was I here? Okay, so from my brackets was chain one, puff stitch in the next stitch. One, two, three, and then again, because we have to do that twice. Chain one, puff stitch in the next stitch. One, two, three. Julie says, hi from Alabama. Hi, Julie. I'm so glad everyone is here and saying hello. And Tracy says, I have trouble reading patterns, so this is so great you're reading and showing it to me. Yeah, Tracy, that's what I was, um, I noticed a lot of people say that they have trouble reading patterns, and it is tricky with all those sort of stars and symbols and things. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully this will help. And I'll do this next time I do the Afghan block too. I'll go through the pattern step by step so you can print it out ahead of time and go work with me. And let's see, Addie is here from Mexico, and Terry is here. You're welcome, Terry. Vanita is here from India. Okay, so that's our third puff stitch. And then after we do this, we chain five to make our corner. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we're going to puff into the next stitch. One, two, and three. Yarn over, pull through all of those loops and that chain. And Lillian says hello from San Antonio and Lisa is here from Montana and Lupita is here from Mexico City. Now we're just doing our uh, little puff stitches on the sides. So chain one, puff stitch. And this is what I'm doing that was in the brackets again. Remember, I'm doing that all the way around. Charlotte's here from Texas. Hello, Charlotte. One, two, three. Okay, and now my corner again. One, two, three, four, five. And then puff stitch in the next stitch. One, two, three. And it looks like I have uh, two more puff stitches and a corner, and that completes this round. So one, that's my puff stitch. Chain one and my last puff stitch. And I think granny squares are probably, um, or Afghan blocks, they're probably a good way to learn uh, sort of an introduction into reading patterns because you know, if you're just if you just have a blanket that you just make all the blocks the same, then you kind of don't have to read through a really long-winded pattern. As long as you get the block, um, once you get used to making a block, you you just after you make so many of them, you don't need the pattern anymore because you remember all the steps. So one, two, three, four, and five. And Joyce is here from Brazil. Hello, Joyce. Thank you for joining us. And Manny's here. Manny says hello. So many people are joining today, that makes me very happy. Okay, now we're gonna join with a slip stitch into our first or beginning puff stitch is what it's called. So we're just gonna go to the top of that beginning puff stitch and join into there. Okay, and that was round two. So this is a um, five and a half millimeter hook and I'm using a worsted weight yarn. But you can really use, um, depending on how what size you want your square to be, you can use um, any hook or any yarn that you have. And just to show Manny really quick in case you weren't here, I did one with the worsted weight and I did one with fingering weight. So that's gonna be same exact pattern, different hooks and different weight yarn. So that's what happens. Okay, now we are on to round three. Round three says, slip stitch in the next chain space, 
Uh, we did that beginning puff in the same chain and then chain one puff stitch in the next chain space chain two five double crochet in the next chain space <laughs> chain two now let me show you what that looks like because i know that's a lot so we did the slip stitch and then we're going to beginning puff again in the same stitch so here we are the beginning puff was one two three trish says howdy from oklahoma hi trish And then one, two, three. Yarn over. Oh no, actually the beginning puff is only two. So let's do that again. The beginning puff, because we have the chain, so we only have to do the yarn over twice. One and two. Okay, so then we're going to chain one and puff stitch in the next chain space. So that's right here. One, two, and three. So now we've got two puff stitches. Okay. So this part confused me a little bit in the beginning and what we need is a puff stitch here and a puff stitch here, I believe. So I think I may have put this in the wrong spot. So let me start over again here. Okay, what we need to do is get over to here. So I skipped a step. Um, slip stitch and the next okay so this was the slip stitch to join and then we have to slip stitch into the next chain space so we have to get over to here so we just slip stitch into here and then we do our beginning puff okay because we need a puff here and a puff here so one two three and then one two that's one puff and then we chain one and do another puff in here one two three so we have these two puffs in between the three from the previous side. And I am working with a five and a half, well this is a five, this one's a five millimeter hook. Terry says we woke up to snow in Colorado. Well Terry, I know you probably aren't happy about that but I kind of would love to wake up to snow <laughs> One of these days I'm in Florida and we never wake up to snow. So, and my kids want to see snow. Um, so I bet it's beautiful and I know Colorado is beautiful. All right, so let's see, we did our puff stitch and now we're gonna do a chain two and then five double crochet in the next chain space. So we did the puff stitch and now we're gonna do chain two and five double crochet and that's gonna be our corner. Okay, so here's a chain two and into that corner, we're gonna do five double crochet to turn the corner. So one, two, three, four, and five. And like I said, we always need more uh, stitches to turn the corner. Okay, and then we're gonna chain two again. And we're gonna do our puff stitches in here. So we're just repeating one, two, three. Um, we are repeating from, okay, so we'll do the puff stitch in the next chain space, right? Here's that, and then it says repeat from star. So I did the puff stitch, and now I'm gonna go back to here and do chain one puff stitch in next chain space. And that's just the repeat from, from the star. To continue on, it says chain two and then five double crochet into that uh, corner. One, two, three, four, and five. And the pattern says five double crochet into the next chain space and that's the chain space. It's a five chain space. Chain two and puff stitch in the next chain space, which is here. One, 
two and three. Then we go back to the star, chain one, puff stitch in the next chain space. That's right here. One, two, three. Then chain two and then our corner again. One, two, three, four, and five. Chain two, puff stitch in the next chain space, that's right here. Kiara says, good morning from Arizona. Glad I caught one of these finally. Well, I'm glad you did too, Kiara. I know it's a, it's a busy time for everybody, but don't worry, because I'm here every Friday at noon. I'm sure you can join me again. There's our two puff stitches, chain two, and then we're gonna do our five double crochet into the next chain space. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now as you can see, we're about to end here. So let me just show you this on the pattern. So this was um, round three. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat this around. That's what it says, repeat from star around. And we did that. And then it says, ending the last repeat at star star. So here's the star star. And so this is where we stop. So it says um, five double crochet in the next chain space and then chain two. So chain two is where we're going to stop. And that's exactly what we did. So we did our five double crochet and then chain two. And now we're finished. So we just slip stitch, uh, join in beginning puff stitch. So here's our beginning puff stitch. We're just gonna join into there with a slip stitch. And, and there's Emily from Colorado. Hi, Emily. And Karen says, what also helps me is seeing a photo of one that has been done along with the written pattern. Yes, that definitely helps. And me personally, I like uh, stitch diagrams too. Those help me tremendously because sometimes the pattern gets a little wordy and I like to just look at the symbols and that helps me out too. Um, so we did, let's see, we did round three, we, we're on round four. Now round four, it says slip stitch into the next chain space and beginning puff in the same uh, chain, in the same chain space. Okay, so here's where we're, we're at, we're, we're at our beginning puff, here's the next chain space. So we're just gonna slip stitch into there and then beginning puff in the same place. So one, two, three, and then yarn over twice is the beginning puff. Okay, now what does it say to do next? Now it says chain two and skip the next stitch. I noticed that there's a chain space in there too that you have to skip, so I just made myself a little note. So chain two, skip the next stitch. Chain two, skip the next chain space. See, here's the stitch, because it's the puff, but we have to skip the chain space too. So chain two, skip the puff, skip the chain um, space, and work a double crochet into the next double crochet. So let me show you that on the pattern. Okay, here we go with the brackets again. So it says double crochet in next stitch and then chain one. And because this is bracketed, we're gonna do it twice. So double crochet, chain one, that was once, and then double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, that's twice. Now remember, we have to turn our corner again. So here it says, we did this, here it says double crochet, chain one three times in the next stitch. So what we're gonna do three times is all into one stitch. See here it says in next stitch, chain one. So we have to make sure we go to the next stitch. But this just says double, cro double crochet, chain one three times. So that's all gonna go into the same stitch. Okay. 
Okay, so into this stitch, double crochet, chain one, that's one, same stitch, that's two, and again, that's three. And like I said, that's how we have to turn the corner. So you have to make more stitches into the corner in order for it to turn, otherwise it will start to curl up. Okay. So we did that, then, then we did this here, then we're gonna do double crochet in next stitch, chain one and double crochet in next stitch. Then chain two, then skip next chain space. So let me try to do all that at once. <laughs> double crochet, chain one, I did the double crochet. Um, chain one and then double crochet in next stitch. Now it says chain two and skip the next chain space, which is this right here. So chain two, skip this chain space, and then puff in the next chain space. So we're skipping this chain space. We're, we're not doing anything in the puff stitch because it says puff in the chain space, and here's the chain space in between. One, two, three. Susan says, every time I join you, I learn something. Reading written uh, patterns has been a challenge. Thank you. You're welcome, Susan. I'm so happy to hear that because that's the goal too. We wanna to have fun and chit chat, but I also want you guys to be able to learn a little something. Okay, so there we go. And now, we did up to here, right? We puff stitch in the next chain space, and now we're just gonna do that all over again because it says repeat from star. So we go back up to where the star is, chain two, skip next stitch, double crochet. And now I'm not gonna read it again, but you see we're basically gonna do the same thing all over again. And if you start at a star, even though, um, you're gonna do everything that's after that star. Even if it's brackets, you're gonna to have to do what's in the brackets twice. So it's chain two. Uh, skip the next stitch, which is here, and skip the chain space, and then do your double crochet chain one twice. Now, to turn the corner, we need to do uh, put all of the next stitches into this stitch. So that's double crochet, chain one, three times. That's one, two, and three. Now chain one, double crochet in here, chain one, and double crochet. That's our corner. Now we're gonna do the chain two again. And we're gonna puff stitch into this chain space. One, two, three. Chain two. So now we're basically just working from that um, star all around. And you just do it as many times as, as it takes for you to get around um, the square. And then when you end, it'll tell you, you should be ending at the star star. So if you don't end where, um, for which directions are just before that star star, then you probably did something wrong. Chain two, uh, we're skipping this one and we're doing a puff in between here. And chain two again. Now our double crochets with the chain one in between. That's one, two, and three. Lucky for me, it sounds like the, um, the roofers haven't started yet, thank goodness. 
Um, I was a little worried last night about that because they make a lot of noise. So if you join me late, I was telling everybody that I have um, some guys replacing my roof today. So I was hoping they wouldn't be too loud. And I think they're getting a late start, which is good for us. Now here's where I stop because this is the beginning of my round. Now, like I said, I should have stopped ending last repeat at star star. Now where's the star star? Right here. And what does it say? Chain two, skip next chain space. Let's make sure that that's where I ended. Here's the chain space and here's my chain two. So it looks like I ended the right way. And then we're going to join in the beginning puff stitch again. Now we're on our last round. And the last round says chain one, single crochet in each stitch and two in each chain space around with three single crochet in the center corner stitch, join to beginning single crochet. That was a little confusing to me, but I think um, what it means is, because this is a very simple, just sort of single crochet edging, is we're just gonna put a single crochet, let me just say it, so I chained up one, and then I'm gonna do a single crochet in the same stitch. And then I'm gonna do a single crochet in, in the chain one spaces, I'm gonna do one single crochet. In the double crochets, I'm gonna do one single crochet. Okay, so there's chain one, there's a double crochet. And this is, like I said, just sort of a border edging. Now remember, we have to turn the corner again. So here's my corner double crochet. I need to work three single crochets into there. And if you don't um, do that in the corner, it's gonna curl up on you. So I put three all in that same space. Okay, now back around again. So one single crochet into each chain one space and one single crochet into each double crochet. And now I'm, I've come to a chain two space. So you wanna put two single crochets in there, okay? If you don't, it's not gonna work. You have to really have the e an equal amount of stitches around. Now I've come to one puff stitch. I'm just gonna do one in there. Um, this is a chain two space again. So I'm gonna do two. Here's a double crochet and a chain one. One goes in each of those. Here's my corner stitch again. What do we have to do? We have to turn the corner by adding extra stitches in there. It's usually always three. It's usually like maybe three of the same stitch in there. Sometimes it's um, like a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, like you would just a regular granny square. But you always have to make those corners. And hopefully everybody can see this okay. Here's my chain two space. And once I get all the way around this um, square, I'm gonna show you how to do a really nice join, um, which I believe it's called an invisible join, but don't quote me because I know how to do things, but I don't know what everything's called necessarily because some things have more than one name. Okay, here's my um, corner. So I'm gonna do three single crochets into there. And we're almost all the way around this square. And you can, you know, um, can sort of modify this too so like if you decide oh I want to make a blanket out of this stitch or a scarf or something and you want to do like a join as you go um, technique you may not you don't necessarily have to do this border so just depending on what you're going to use this with you might make some modifications one two 
three into that stitch. And it looks like we're almost around the square. Here's a chain two. Make sure we put two single crochets in there. And we're back to the beginning. Okay, so now we just have to join this. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube, they'll join in the first single crochet, which is right here. I've seen them do it where they just join, right, with a slip stitch, and then fasten off. So, they slip stitch it and pull it through, right? But then you've always got this sort of, almost looks like an extra stitch or a knot or something right there. It doesn't look um, consistent. So what I like to do is something fun. So let's say here's our, what we've done two single crochet in this last space and now we want to join. So don't do a slip stitch to join. First, you're going to pull this yarn right out. So you're going to cut it and pull it out, okay? Now you've got a tail. Then you're going to take your yarn needle This is, this is fun once you learn it, but it takes some getting used to. So now here's the V, okay, of the stitch that we want to join. So you're going to go under both um, strands of that V. So just go under the V, and you're going to come out the back. And now you're going to go, instead of going under this one to join, you're going to come from the top down. So don't go under, come from the top and go in between there, and then come back out the, bow, the back. So go in between there, turn it so you can come back out the back, pull that through, and voila. <laughs> you have a perfect V that looks like there's no a slip stitch joint at all. It just looks like it perfectly flows consistently with the rest of your single crochets. And then you can just, there's your tail, then you can just, um, you know, sort of weave this in, go maybe two, three times in a zigzag, and that's it. And then you would weave in this one too. And there you have a nice border. So anytime I do a border that's in the round, I do that join like that. It's called an invisible join. You can't even see where it is anymore. Okay, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this Afghan Square tutorial. Um, and like I said, we're going to do this every month. So make sure you look out for the poll on Facebook um, so you can vote on which um, Afghan block you want me to make. And then I'll go through the whole tutorial with you here on my Facebook Live. So I hope everyone has a great week. And like I said, if you're not um, part of the Annie's Crochet Facebook group, make sure you go and join there so you can talk to other makers. Um, and ask questions and get updates on what I'm doing. So I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Thank you so much for joining me. Karen says, great trick, thank you. Um, and I'll do it next time I do a square, I'll do that again in case anybody missed this one. But I'm glad everyone enjoyed the tutorial today. Have a great week. I'll see you next Friday at noon. Bye everyone.